Today I'd like to open source a game that I've been working on for the past month and a half called Baton Master. Baton Master is an educational virtual reality game that lets you conduct an orchestra in a simulated environment. And the skills you learn in the game are directly applicable to real life conducting. This was really a proof of concept for me to see what it was like to build an educational game and see what it takes to build game mechanics where you encode knowledge into them and what that process looks like. You know, this was my first foray into real, full on Unity development. It was my first foray into virtual reality development using the Oculus SDK and toolkit, uh, using various assets from across the web and from the Unity store. And it's been an incredible learning experience so far because I have been using the Oculus Quest for a year now. It's probably like the best buy, this thing right here. It's probably the best piece of technology I bought in the last year, maybe even two years. This thing is incredible. Like, I mean, this is the future of not just education, but technology and phones. After phones comes virtual reality and augmented reality. And I have had so much fun playing Echo Arena on this thing. The future of education is the most important thing to me. We need to continually evolve education using 21st century tools. And videos and courses, they've been a great way to do that so far. And there are a subset of students that are able to learn remotely using those tools. But there's also a very large subset of students that don't want to do that or can't do that or their attention just is not well suited for that medium. And that's why we need to build games. The future of education is gaming. So what I did was I recorded a about a three hour screencast of me rebuilding my game from scratch and I have condensed it for this video so you only see the most relevant parts because a lot of it is like boilerplate, you know, copying and pasting game objects, you know, finding positions and then just copying those positions across different assets. You'll see what I mean. So I wouldn't have been able to build this game so fast if it wasn't for all the incredible learning resources that were available on the web. First of all, Valum. Valum is a YouTuber who makes these amazing virtual reality tutorials. Shout out to Valum. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have learned all this stuff so fast. So check out Valum's channel. Also just like Stack Overflow, right? For like C Sharp, little things like, there's like a million different timer classes in C Sharp and to know which one is hard. Like you could go into the Microsoft docs to see which one, but Stack Overflow just has that upvote system, amazing. And then in terms of other learning resources, mostly just like Unity. Unity has some incredible tutorials built in. I mean, one has to admire the Unity IDE and all of the uh, education that they built into it so seamlessly. <laughs> So the first thing we've got to do is download Unity, of course, and Visual Studio. And luckily for us, there are free versions for both of these products, right? Unity is your graphical user interface where you can see your game in real time and Visual Studio is connected to Unity. It's where your C-sharp code goes. And so Unity Hub is another great tool that comes with Unity. Basically, it's just like a launcher that lets you launch different Unity projects from one window. And so we can make our own new Unity game, a 3D game, and it's called Baton Master. And then it's gonna open up Unity and we can get started with this empty game studio. So here is our empty game. It's just got one main camera, which is where the player will be, and then a directional light, which is just a sun. But we wanna add some ground here, some floor that we can stand on. So we're gonna add a new 3D object. It's called a game object. And once we have a plane, then we're going to download the Oculus integration. This is basically a way for Unity to know how to connect your Oculus Quest and the controllers and all of the components that are associated with it. It's really easy to download, 371 megabyte file. We can import it directly into our project and you can see all of the components here, audio, operating system dependent files. And then it's gonna ask us if we want to upgrade all of our utilities and restart Unity and we're gonna say, yes, of course, we wanna upgrade everything to the latest and there's our Oculus folder. You can see it in our project window. It's got all those assets that we're gonna need. So the first thing we're gonna import is the OVR player controller. Now this is our player. It's got our hands, it's got our head, it's got our tracking. Basically this was an object that the Oculus team created to make life easier for us 
um, if we're going to make a virtual reality game. So we can drag that right onto our plane that we created and set the position to 000, so it's right in the middle of the map. And you can see all of the features um, that it has. Basically, in the inspector, you can see the features of every game object, and you can see that um, this game object has uh, several children, left eye anchor, right eye anchor, left hand anchor. And what we can do is we can take all, each of these anchors and we can add other game objects to them, maybe like a conductor's baton, maybe you know some skin to that. We can add different logic, you know, what, we, what do we want to do with that, all that stuff. So let's pause for a second. Let's just envision this game mechanic, right? What is a game? A game has rules, it has a goal, and it has a feedback system. So what are those three things in this case? Well, the goal is to conduct this orchestra successfully without failing. Um, and by failing, I mean conducting out of tempo. You want to conduct at the right tempo. And if you don't do that, then you fail. The rules are to conduct within that bound of tempo, right? So the whatever song we wanna conduct, we have to look at the tempo on in the sheet music, and then we have to make sure that the metronome, the timer that we have going, is going at the right tempo. And then we wanna move our hands with that tempo perfectly, or almost perfectly, right? And the feedback system is our points that we get. Every time we conduct in the right way, we get points. So I was in band growing up in middle and high school. I, I played the alto saxophone for about seven years classically. And so I can read sheet music and you know I know how to conduct and stuff like that. But basically, um, short primer on music theory, uh, there is this concept called a time signature and it's at the beginning of sheet music. And basically the time signature tells us how many beats are gonna be in a measure and what type of beat is going to be in that measure. The tempo will tell us how many beats per minute. So if it's in four, four time, then we're going to conduct as such, we're gonna go down, left, right, up. Down, left, right, up. Down, left, right, up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, depending on how fast the tempo is, we're gonna to have to go faster or slower. So what does this game mechanic look like? Well, Beat Saber gave me a lot of inspiration, right? Beat Saber is a game that is fast paced and you are moving your hands in time with the beat, but it's not like conducting, it's like slashing boxes. So what can we learn from Beat Saber? Well, if we have a timer, let's say, you know, a metronome and it's going at 68 beats per minute and it's just, how do we want to visualize that? How do we want to visualize that our hands are moving in the right directions uh, in real time? Well, we want to have some sort of, we want to have some sort of, shape that carves out the path of our hand. And maybe this uh, carved out path will highlight every time we do the right movement. So if we go down, it's gonna highlight that green. If we go to the left, it's gonna highlight that green, etc. So basically our event listener is gonna be saying, okay, first get the direction of your hand, then get the beat that we're at in the measure. So if you are going down at the first beat, correct, turn that thing green. If you're going left at the second beat, correct, turn that thing green. If you're going right at the third, correct, turn that thing green. If you're going up at the fourth, correct, turn that thing green, and then reset it, and then just keep going every measure. If you don't, then we have a failure mode, right? So if you move left instead of right, then we need to count that as a failure mode, and then we have to show some kind of um, game over logic, right? So dashboard. So there's that. So that's kind of like the basic game mechanics and that's just happening with the right hand. So we're gonna focus on the right hand. And then for the left hand, we wanna be issuing cues, maybe a loud staccato note or holding a note, something like that. So the right hand is gonna be this tempo activity and the left hand is going to be this Beat Saber-like mechanic where we have hands flying at you when it's time to raise your hand for a cue, right? So we have an object that's spawning objects like hands, and every time it's time for you to do a cue, it's gonna send that at you, and then you have to then touch that cue at the right time, and if you touch it at the right time, you get a point. So basically you're doing this, and then dun 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 dun, dun and then the cue is come dun dun, dun dun dun, and if you do that, okay, great, you get a point. If you, if you miss it, you miss it, right? So those, So that's kind of the basic logic for the right hand, and the left hand. So let's get right back into the game and design this mechanic for the right hand first. So we'll take that prefab, 
prefabricated object that is, and we'll insert it into the game. We'll make it much smaller because it was way too big. And then we'll look around our scene, make sure it's in the right position. And then we're going to add a couple more because we need several of these lines. And we wanna line them all up. A lot of Unity development is basically just like lining up the position and rotation and scale of your game objects. Well, I guess the front end part of the development the front end part is this GUI, and then the back end part is a C Sharp Visual Studio window, which we're gonna get to in a second. But I will create four of these copies. And once I've got four of these copies, I'm going to change all of the uh, positions and rotations so they make out the shape that we want. Then we're going to change the color of these lines because we want the default color for these lines to be red. Um, and then they can turn green if we conduct in the right pattern. This is a specific four, four time signature pattern. It could be three, four, it could be two, four, whatever. But in this case, for this song that we're going to use, it's going to be four, four. Okay, so all of the lines are now red. So once we've got all of these lines, we're gonna add spheres to the points of these lines just so that we have more of a visual, right? We want more feedback. We want a very clear signal um, to tell us whether or not we're conducting at the right tempo, at the right pace. So we're gonna put these four spheres, which are also going to change color at each of these four points. And so now that we have that, we're gonna create a new game object called control, which is going to control the right hand. And we'll name it right control. It's gonna be a new C sharp script. And so after a while, it's gonna open up Visual Studio so we can actually code in here. and. Just two functions are always a default. The start function that's called at the first frame update and then update is called once every frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create references to all of these objects that we've just instantiated in the Unity call hierarchy in the uh, GUI that we just use. And so this is our way of connecting that to the code that we're going to use. So then we can do all sorts of things. We can change the colors, we can align them with the tempo, whatever we want. And so I've got game objects for the spheres and for the lines right here in Unity. Let's also add these counter variables to the spheres. So basically, you know, in the spirit of adding as much visual feedback as possible, not only do we want the lines to glow and the spheres to glow, we also want these numbers to uh, show. So if you're going down, it's gonna show one. If you're going left, it's gonna show two, et cetera, things like that. So we're gonna move them uh, to each of these spots using text mesh, which is the 3D text object that is most commonly used in Unity. And then of course, we're gonna create serialized fields for each of those counters, so then we can reference them uh, in our C-sharp code. And of course, we wanna have a score and a multiplier. So the score is just gonna go up 10 points every time we conduct a proper beat, and the multiplier will multiply by two, four, and eight, just kinda like Beat Saber. Um, as long as we have a streak. And then if we don't have a streak, then the multiplier is back to one again. And we'll drag all of those into our uh, game object of control, our control game object. Now let's also create this metronome. So we wanna have a song, right? What is the song we're gonna use? Well, for this demo, we're gonna use the Halo 3 theme song because it's amazing, of course. And then we wanna have our bass, you know, our step, the beats per minute, the current step, and the measure. So these are all public variables. We can set them inside of Unity right here. We don't have to go into the code. So if we wanna change the tempo, we can easily do that from here, uh, which is great. We can find the Halo 3, Halo 3 theme for free right here, finish the fight. One of the great themes, we can drag it right into Unity, just like that, and we can drag it right into our scene. And it's just gonna play, just like that. It's just like any other game object, we'll reference it. We can play it, we can stop it at will now that we can reference it in our C-sharp code. And we're also gonna reference our controller, of course, as well, the right touch controller. That's something that we want to modify and manipulate as well. And so now we've just got a bunch of references to game objects. So getting to our metronome. We're going to stop a coroutine that we haven't even created yet called do tick, but that's the coroutine that we are going to create in a second. We're gonna set the song to start playing and we're gonna tell it what the current step is, which of course is gonna start off as one. 
once we have those variables, we're going to create our coroutine. So in C-sharp, coroutines are created using this IE numerator uh, keyword. And we're gonna have this infinite loop that says, check where we are, just keep increasing the current step. And if we're over the, whatever the step is, you know, it's gonna be four in this case, then just um, reset. So it's just one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, just like that. We can even create a debug.log statement to show us that and we can see it in console whenever we play just to ensure that it is properly ticking. Now, there are a couple things that we wanna do inside of this metronome function. We want to get the position of our controllers. We want to vibrate on direction. I remember, feedback, we want feedback. What can we do in a game world that we can't do in real life? A conductor doesn't get vibrating feedback when he conducts, but in this game, we absolutely can. So we're gonna get the direction of the hands. We want to vibrate on direction, basically vibrate with increasing magnitude um, with each successive beat. It's gonna be like, right? So it's gonna get louder and louder. The vibration is gonna get stronger and stronger. Another thing we wanna do is we want to set those counters to uh, be visible only when it's the current step. So if it's one, we show one. If it's two, we show two. If it's three, we show three. If it's four, we show four. And we make all the other ones uh, invisible just for that specific time period. And once we've done that, then we want to do the same thing for the lines and then add points. If the direction is down and we're at the correct step, then we want to turn that line and the sphere green. We want to add to the internal score that we're gonna display using the set score text function that we haven't created yet. And we wanna do the same for left and for right and for up. And we wanna count the sequence as well. So we have this little sequence counter variable that's telling us um, which part of the sequence that we're at. Down, left, right, up. Down, left, right, up. And so a lot of it's gonna be read right now because if we haven't created the set score text function, we haven't created the internal score variable, it's gonna be initialized as zero. So we're gonna keep adding to it every time we successfully conduct in a certain direction. So let's go ahead and create those variables. Let's create that get direction function. So this part's gonna be really interesting because you would think that the Oculus SDK has this built in, right? What direction you're moving in, it does not. It does not have that, so I had to create that. And there are a lot of interesting ways that we could go about creating this. But the way that I came up with was to create four game objects, four spheres, and have them be equidistant from each other. And then, as I'm conducting, uh, in real time, be computing the distance from all of them. So from my hand to the left sphere, to the right sphere, to the top sphere, to the down sphere. And then the sphere that my hand is closest to, that is the direction that we're moving in. So that's how it works, basically. You, you know, it's just in real time, continuously with that coroutine, infinite loop, computing how far your hand is from all four of those game objects, and then outputting the string direction based on how close your hand is to a given object. Um, great, so now we have that. Now we wanna uh, create our game over functionality. So what does failure look like? So what we wanna do if you know we fail and we're not able to conduct properly in real time is we want the daytime to go away, we want everything to kind of get dark, and we want a dashboard to show up that says game over and we can restart from there. So how do we do that? So we can create an empty dashboard, we can place it there, um, we can create these objects and we can reference them as well. And we can create a game over function and we can destroy um, whatever functions that we have in that game object, whatever game objects we have, and we can use this scene manager load scene function to just restart the game. So game over is called whenever, let's say, what do we want game over to be? Let's say in this case, if we get to four beats in a measure and we have made two misses, that is almost game over. That's one point off. The multiplier is reset. If we do that twice in a row, then it's game over, right? So if we, may, if we miss two beats in a measure for two measures in a row, then it's game over. Now that's the right hand. So for the left hand, we wanna create a different game object called a spawner, and it's just gonna be throwing hands at us, like these little cues. And we wanna create what's called a raycast 
uh, in Unity, which can detect the intersection of our hand and the object coming towards us in real time. So how do we do that? Let's look at how we do this. So we're gonna create um, that spawner object and we're gonna create both a crescendo indicator and a Q indicator. So the Q indicator is gonna be a hand that flies at us and we can use that and we can um, create a function for that called send Q that will create a new a game object called a Q um, and then it's going to just send it at us. And so on start, I created a timer here that says basically count how many seconds have elapsed and then send the cue then. And so I basically went into the sheet music and I counted all of the cues whenever they're coming, whenever they're at, what, how many seconds have passed. And then I encoded them into this function right here. So then basically you can see like there's a cue at four. That's basically like an E major piano note. There's a cue at like, I think the 31st second mark. There's a queue at 31 seconds, at 53 seconds, at 59 seconds, and then there's a crescendo. So how do we think about the crescendo? I thought about the crescendo several ways, and I decided that the best way to um, show the crescendo was just to have this um, arrow pointing up, and we can just add points if your hand is, is moving in the up direction while there's a crescendo. And in the actual queue function, we want to make sure to add this transform.position minus equals time dot delta time times transform.forward times two line because this is what actually makes that hand move forward, right? So it's, whenever it's instantiated, it's just going to be calling this every frame, which is just forward, forward, forward. So those are the basic game mechanics for this. Now we can add some pretty stuff, right? Where do we want to conduct? We want to conduct in a full, um, we want to conduct in an orchestra hall, beautiful orchestra hall and we want to have those orchestra NPCs, those character assets, we can pull all that from CG Trader. I found them on CG Trader, and they each have their own set of materials. We just drag and drop them into our Unity project. We can add the materials, and then we can just copy them uh, over and over again into the orchestra layout. We can make sure that the lighting is in the proper position, and we can make sure that our hand, um, our left hand, has this script that will say, here is a ray cast, and whenever you find an intersection with something, increase the score. So now both the left hand and the right hand are contributing to the overall score of the game. And once we have all of that, we can go ahead and play it and see what it feels like. Let's go ahead and play it. So that's Baton Master. You'll find the code for it in the video description. I tried to document it as best as I could. I hope you find this video inspirational and I hope that you choose to build your own game in Unity or in Unreal Engine or any of the amazing tools out there. It's never been easier to create a game because the future of education depends on it. So until next time, happy learning.